my best friend lost her mom about six years ago to cervical cancer. That was a very, you know, dark time. There was a lot of things happening. Um, I was living in LA when this happened. It was, I've only been living there for a year at the time. And, um, you know, that's when I got the call from my best friend Kaylee, basically her um, telling me that her mom passed. And I really didn't understand what was going on. I was really young. I was, you know, it takes a while for that to really, I don't know, tr like trigger in your head or for you to kind of understand what's happening in the moment. And um, that was, you know, those times were blurry. It was a lot of, you know, comforting and like, I didn't want to overstep my boundaries. And so I would stay in LA and I would, you know, call her whenever. When I wrote the song Birthday Cake, I wrote it in the beginning of my songwriting career and it was, you know, I was learning a lot. I didn't, I wasn't a pro at songwriting. I still wouldn't consider myself a pro at songwriting to this day. But for some reason, writing this song, um, it was very easy and I've never really experienced m like a, you know, writing a song the way I did writing Birthday Cake. It kind of just came naturally, and I didn't really want to write about myself that day. I didn't really actually know what to write about, and, you know, I was talking to my co-writers about really everything. And, um, that's when we came up with Birthday Cake. It was originally going to be called 48, but, um, I don't know, something about Birthday Cake and something about, you know, the last word of being like she made it to 48 still made your birthday cake was really special. I just wrote it for her. I didn't want to put it out. I was kind of, you know, I just wanted her to have the song so she could remember all these great times with her mom and remember all the good stuff and remember that, you know, her mom would want her to live like the world's on fire and love like hearts don't break. It was honestly just a reminder to tell my best friend to keep going like she was still here. And, you know, at the time, my best friend quit, you know, all of her sports. She wasn't doing any sports. She wasn't doing anything. And, um, you know, it was kind of just to remind her that she's still watching her. And she's still, you know, her guardian angel and is over watching her. So I wrote that song. I was not planning on putting it out. It was just for her. And after she heard the song for the first time, I FaceTimed her that day I got the demo. And she immediately asked if I was putting it out. And I was like, no, like, this is, this is for you. Like, I only want you to have this. And um, she just kept telling me over and over that I need to release it and I need to release it. And it took me two years to release it, mainly because it was such a, you know, um, specific song towards her story that I really didn't think that anyone else would relate to it because it was so specific to her story. And, um, you know, I was messing around on TikTok and I teased a little bit of it and I, you know, it automatically impacted so many people and I knew that, you know, it had to be put out. Honestly, in the beginning, it was very like, I have to put out a trend or because it'll blow up. I have to do this. I have to do this. And over time, you know, as I've gotten older, I've kind of looked at TikTok as more of a you know, more of a just to show who I actually am. I think Instagram and other things can be super filtered that TikTok, when I go on there, I see everything. I mean, I see everyone show their real emotions. And I think that's why I've like over time, like for probably the beginning of this year, I've really fell in love with being on TikTok because I can show myself how I actually feel. I actually made a second TikTok account <laughs> from my main one so I could, you know, post how I feel and um, I don't know, I just, I like that I can see real people on TikTok. But I usually just post funny things on my spam and then, you know, tease some music on my main. I started learning piano last year, beginning of last year, and I've noticed that I kind of come up with melodies as in, like, guitar melodies and like piano melodies but i can't like exactly like i can hear it and like sing the melody but i can't like put it down quite yet so i've been bringing like i have like voice notes from like three in the morning where i just wake up and i have this idea and then i record it so 
it's very collaborative. I mean, I walk in, I'm kind of, I have, I always have notes of what I've felt one day or what I feel that day. Um, and I mean, I'm honestly like with the best co-writers ever that they kind of let me take the reins and they guide me and they help me write all my songs. And that's how I basically do it. My family's very, very supportive. I mean, since day one, but we used to make these like at home vlogs. My sister was like a vlogger before there were actual vloggers out in the world. It was crazy. So I have like lots of um, videos of me performing on my porch in front of my whole entire family and them just being like super supportive, even though they can't even understand what I'm singing because <laughs> I don't even know what I'm singing. Um, but, you know, looking back at those videos and then also seeing how you know, they, they kind of just went for it when I told them I wanted to act and sing and I wanted to be in LA. They are like, okay, let's do it. And, and I mean, of course it took a, some, you know, some convincing, but um, they are very supportive and they still take me to my meetings. And even though I'm a, an adult kind of, I don't know, they still take me to my meetings and they're still around, so that's nice. I grew up on a farm, so I grew up with like ATVs and dirt bikes and you know, everything, horses, cows, pigs, everything. So I, you know, moving to LA, it's been difficult to be able to do that kind of stuff. So I've been, you know, trying to level that out every now and then I'll go to this place called Big Bear and I'll go snowboard even though I'm really bad at it, but it's, you know, it's something to do and it keeps my mind off of things because I'm focusing on not falling <laughs> mainly, but um, ATVs also like, like I'm already planning on getting some more ATVs so I can go out in the hills and, you know, ride with my family. My dad is a big ATV guy, so might just buy a couple and do that on the weekends. I'm not used to having neighbors, so I do have to, you know, be a little bit more quieter because I'm sharing walls with people. Um, it's a different environment, honestly, and it's, you know, LA is the place to be, um, but I would love to be on a ranch one day. That's ideal.